Hey everyone, uh, welcome back to another session with One Class. My name is Bassam, I'm an engineering graduate, and today we're going to be going through some physics problems at the high school and preliminary university level, um, and we're going to be verifying some solutions to these problems. So, uh, let's get started over here. Switch screens here. Okay. So, uh, this is uh, question number one. So, question number one. Okay. Um, just give me a second over here. Okay, so question one says a 28 kilogram block is connected to an empty 2.2 kilogram bucket. So we have a block which is 28 kilograms and then we have the bucket which is 2.2. Um, by a cord running over a frictionless pulley, the coefficient of static friction between the block and the table is 0.41. So coefficient of static friction, that's the keyword over here, and the coefficient of kinetic friction between the table and the block is 0.32. So kinetic friction for the, the coefficient of this is 0.32. Sand is gradually added to the bucket until the system just begins to move. So this is also key to the question that the system is just beginning to move, so we have to think about it with relation to static friction. So we're given two questions. Part A is asking, what is the mass of sand added to the bucket? Um, so what is this mass as the system begins to move? So this has to do with the static friction. And then what is the acceleration of the system? So when it starts moving, what is the acceleration? So this is has to do with the coefficient of kinetic friction. So let's run through what the junior tutor answered here. So. A good idea always when you're starting off with a question is to list off the given. So given mass of bucket 2.2, so it is just up here, and then 28 kilograms mass block, coefficient of static friction, coefficient of kinetic friction, and we have those. So this is the mass of the block, and then coefficient of static friction and coefficient of kinetic friction, and those are correct. Okay, so part A. The block is uh, at rest on the table. The weight of the bucket will pull the cord, adding tension to the cord. This tension pulls the block horizontally. Thus, the downward force of gravity is converted to horizontal force on the block, but the block will not move due to the static friction force between the block and the table. Sand is gradually added to the bucket, increasing the overall weight of the bucket. The block will not move until the static friction force by the table is overcome. Once the weight exceeds the static force, uh, static friction force, the block will start moving. So this is right here, the equation of static friction. And they go on to defining uh, the forces equation related to this system. And they end up with the solution of 9.28 kilograms. Um, so let's just start, let's uh, go through that actually. Um, so here, just think about the system overall. We can think about that there is a force of friction that's in this direction. So if we I'll draw the system over here, so we have the box and the bucket, something like that, and some pulley here. So here the force of friction is acting in this direction, and we know there's a force of tension pulling over here, and then there's another force of tension pulling this way on the bucket. Really, we can think about this system as a whole. We know that the force of gravity is acting at, or acceleration due to gravity is acting downwards. So it's pulling the bucket down. And we know that this system is connected all together. So when we're using the equation F net equals MA, we have to think about the acceleration on the entire system and then the mass of the entire system. So. So here uh, we, we can define kind of two variables, the first being FW and FS. FS is the force of static friction. 
and then FW is um, the weight or the force of gravity pulling this down. So here we're labeled it FG. Let's relabel that as FW. FW. We can equate these because um, although they're not pulling in the same direction, we know this pulley over here kind of um, changes the direction of the force, and we know that this force is balancing out this force. So since we we know in, on this side of the free body diagram for the bucket, there's a force of tension that is equivalent to the force of tension on this side of the free body diagram. So we can we can equate uh, this over here, um, and then what we have to do is just solve. So here we know that FW is the mass times gravity, the total mass, so the mass of the bucket and the mass of the box. So I'll write this as MT times gravity and this is equivalent to the force of friction. So here uh, let's relabel that actually. So this is actually FS. So we know the force of static friction is the following equation it's equal to the coefficient of static friction times the normal force on the object and the normal force points in this direction. And the normal force is always opposed by the force of gravity on the object. So we have another um, force of gravity. We'll, we'll label this as FG for the box. So knowing this, we know that the normal force um, is equivalent to the force of gravity because they kind of balance each other out since the object is not moving in either direction. And we can say that we have the coefficient of static friction and then we have the normal force which is just mass times gravity. So in this case we have the mass of um, the block. So I'll call this M1 and then this is M2. So mass of block times gravity. So, um, just evaluating this, we can see that the total mass, um, sorry, actually the mass of the bucket and the sand, so everything on this side. Um, so here it's not the total mass of both objects actually. Um, so let's go back here, I'll erase this. So really it's only mass 2 here. And mass 2 is comprised of the sand that's being poured in to the, to the bucket and the bucket itself. Uh, and we know that this is so 2.2 which is the mass of the bucket plus the mass of the sand, we'll call this ms, times gravity. So we can see that gravity on both sides of the equation cancels out so we can actually just erase that, we don't really need that there and then we can just equate this to the coefficient of friction static friction and then we can raise this as well we don't need this equation anymore so we have 2.2 plus mass of the sand that's being poured in is equivalent to the coefficient of static friction times m1 which is the mass of the box so uh, we can say the ms is equal to what was the value? Coefficient of static friction is 0.41 times m1, which is 2. Uh, I believe that is 28, and then subtract 2.2. So we just moved the 2.2 on this side and put it to this side. We just subtracted from both sides, and when we evaluate this, let's plug this into our calculator. 0.41 times 28 minus 2.2, we end up with 9.28, this is kilograms. So yep, we get the same answer, so we can say that this part of the solution is correct, and 9.28 kilograms of sand is added. So, so here really we, we kind of translated that, just looking at this diagram, we can see that this force has to kind of balance out with this force based on the tension. You can draw the free body diagram for each part separately, um, but you'd have a more 
uh, an unnecessary more complex solution. So here, this is the simplest way to think about it. You set the two forces equal, um, and then you uh, kind of evaluate based on the givens. So um, when we have the second part of the question, so part B, so let me clear the page here. So we have one part B. So here, um, we're asked the acceleration of this, oh no, that wasn't the question, the question's up here. The question is, what is the acceleration of the system? So here we have to think about it with regards to the force of kinetic friction. So here, um, the junior tutor presents the correct equation for force of kinetic friction, um, and then they kind of use the equation F net equals MA. So the net force acting on the system is mass times acceleration, total mass, um, times the acceleration, so we can rearrange and we can say A is equal to F over M. And then we have to kind of figure out what is F, what is M, and what acceleration does that give us. So F can be solved here with this equation. So we've already defined FW and FK in the previous question, um, but we can write that out. So uh, the, the uh, numerator will be FW minus fk and this is mainly based on the diagram so we have the weight acting down um, and then we have the force of kinetic friction you can also think about it kind of from this block so you can think about the force that's pulling this down is also over here as well and it's going to be pulling it as well in, in this direction. So that's why we have FW as positive because it's going in this direction. Um, and then F, FK is negative because it's going in the opposite direction. So from right to left from in that direction. And we end up with the numerator being FW minus FK. And then for the denominator, essentially it's all the masses of the system. So the mass of the block, the mass of the bucket, and the mass of the sand that's going in. And the mass of the sand is what we calculated in part A. So it's 9.28 kilograms. So we have mass of bucket. So I'll just write as we said in the previous question, mass of bucket is M2. And then mass of sand is just MS. And the mass of block is M1. So here we can see in the junior tutor's answer, they um, kind of just do mass times gravity for the first part. So we can think about looking at this bucket. We only really have the force of gravity acting on this uh, and it's pulling with, um, it down. So FW would be mass times gravity. In this case, we're, uh, we have two components to this, the bucket and the sand. And then the uh, force of kinetic friction will be the same as calculated before but with the kin kinetic coefficient of friction instead of the static coefficient of friction. So this is just kind of plugging the values in. So we have um, M2, which is the mass of the bucket, plus MS, which is the mass of the sand, uh, times the acceleration due to gravity, minus, so, so um, the second component, which is the coefficient of kinetic friction, times um, M1 times gravity. And then this is divided by so essentially M, uh, 2.2 plus 9.28 plus 28. So really you don't, at this point, when you get to this equation right here, you've done most of the work. The remaining steps are just plugging in the values that are given and just you know plugging in what each variable represents. So here we know that FK is, force kinetic friction is this, FW is this, and then here we just have to plug in all the values. So um, I won't write this out, but I'll just um, verify that this is the right way. So 2.2 is M2, yep, 9.28, and then M1 is 28, and then we have, they have the 9.8 at the beginning. So let's just plug this into our calculator. So we have 2.2 plus 9.28, times 
And then we have minus coefficient of carrying friction 0.32. Let's just double check that. That's the correct number. Yep. Times 28 times 9.8. And then we have divided by 2.2 plus 9.28 plus 28. Okay, so I got 0 0.626. So they got 0.51. So I'll just double check the math on this. 2.2 plus 9.28 times 9.8 minus 0.32 times 28 times 9.8 divided by 2.2 plus 9.28 plus 28. Okay, so they've they've done the correct process. They just uh, this is a miscalculation. This should be 0.626 meters per second. So, correct process and correct solution for part A. Miscalculation in part B. Answer should be 0 0.626 meters per second squared. Okay, so yeah, so it's only the second part that's incorrect. The first part's correct. So I'll mark this as correct because it's correct for the most part.